This video outlines how to configure and set up your CO2 sampling system. First, we begin with the Respironics CO2 low flow sensor. This is the actual CO2 sensor. It's a plug and play solution. So we make sure we take the, the wire and connect it to the CO2 port of the monitor. And typically there's gonna be a, a basket assembled on the side of the monitor. We would mount it onto that rack and leave the the sensor there for protection. After we connect the sensor to the, the monitor, next we take the sampling line. This is a proprietary sample line for from Respironics. It's designed just to work with the Respironics system. So it looks like any ordinary tube, but it has uh, a proprietary connection that fits only the Respironics low flow module. And if you note, know, there's a white tip on it. This is the filter. So older technology, you would have a water trap on the outside of the monitor, which you would routinely need to do maintenance on, clean it up every so often or after every patient. In this system, it's automated essentially because those buffering properties are embedded into the tube itself. So all we do is we take the sample line from Respironics, plug it in, and and then from there on the opposite side there's a male lure lock ending which means that we can essentially use any cannula from any manufacturer to do co2 sampling as long as it has a female lure lock so for example i'll take the salter labs cannula as an, just to illustrate how the system works so you take your cannula it'll have a female lure lock at the end you twist it in you place it on your patient and now you're set to go. It's that simple. And for further illustration, uh, one of the most common or popular cannulas out there is the Salter Labs. It's a CO2 plus O2 cannula, which means that the, the cannula is designed to sample CO2 from the patient and also connect to an oxygen uh, tank to feed oxygen to, to the patient. And again, it's the same foundation if the cannula has a female lure lock, we connect it to your sampling system. You place the cannula on your patient and you're set to go. So again, to review first, you wanna make sure you have the sensor itself connected to the monitor. This is a one-time step. Next, you connect the, the sample line to your module through the white proprietary connection. The sample line is good for 150 hours of monitoring time. You connect it, it's a one-time step. And then when you connect the cannula to the sample line, the sample line has a male lure lock and you can connect any cannula, regardless of the manufacturer, as long as it has a female lure lock. After setting up your CO2 sampling system, the monitor is now ready to perform CO2 readings. So you have your sampling line, which connects to your nasal cannula. And after placing the nasal cannula on your patient, the, the monitor is ready. If you note that the end title CO2 measurement tile provides question marks, there's two explanations. One, the cannula is not placed on the, on the patient, so it, the system hasn't taken that first end title CO2 sample or the system, the entitled CO2 system is set to standby. In order to change that setting, simply tap on the entitled CO2 measurement tile and make sure the work mode is set to measure if you wanna take readings. So we'll put it on measure at this time. And the next setting of interest is apnea. So apnea is the physiological event where if a patient, where a patient is not breathing. So through CO2, if the entitled CO2 reading is zero, the monitor takes it as if the patient is not expiring CO2. So after 20 seconds, it takes that activity as if, or perceives that activity as if the patient is not uh, breathing out. So after 20 seconds, if the entitled CO2 reading is zero, the monitor will trigger the apnea alarm. And this is time adjustable. The window is 10 seconds to 40 seconds with 20 seconds being the default setting and the work mode the work mode is 
it's, it does not fluctuate. So take it, take for example, if you set it to measure, turn off the monitor, turn it back on, it'll remain in measure. So it does not fluctuate by itself. The only exception is if the the sample line, if it becomes occluded, the, if the filter works out, the monitor will protect itself and it'll go to standby automatically. And on the alarm message window, it'll say check CO2 adapter. So at that time, the operator needs to replace the sample line, go into the CO2 setup and reset it and set it back to measure. Okay, so at this second, I'll breathe into the entitled CO2 cannula to get a reading on the monitor. So now there's a reading on the monitor. The entitled CO2 reading is 21. After 20 seconds, that reading will drop to zero because I have placed the cannula away from, from myself. And this will cause the monitor to trigger uh, an apnea alarm because there's no CO2 sample being, being picked up. So take it as an example, if you're doing a procedure on your patient and at, after the procedure you wanna continue monitoring but stop CO2. So now CO2 is zero because you have removed the cannula. Again, simply go into the entitled CO2 tile and set the work mode to standby. So in effect, you're stopping CO2 setup. So you can continue to monitor the other parameters while stopping the entitled CO2. If there's any additional questions, please call the Eden tech support number, which is 858-750-3066, extension 2. Thank you.